Hello, everyone. Uh, the presentation today is about surface applied organic amendment modify carbon and nitrogen dynamics down the soil profile in an irrigated vineyard. Uh, my co authors, uh, I would like to thank them, uh, Dr. Laurie Phillips uh, from uh, Harrow Research and Development Center, and uh, Sienna Zental, which was my uh, student, summer student uh, from University of Victoria. And myself, I'm Mehdi Sharifi from Summerland Research and Development Center, which is like one of the stations of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. Um, so the presentation is focusing on the effect of the amendments, um, organic amendment in the soil on soil carbon and nitrogen. And we see a growing interest in the sustainable wine production in the region, huge interest, a lot of conversion to the organic. And with that conversion to the organic and sustainable systems, uh, we need alternatives to the fertilizers and also pest management control. So one of the solutions could, would be the organic mulches and amendments. Also, there is uh, more strict uh, regulations on the glyphosate use. So some of the nations, uh, they, they, um, and they banned the use of the glyphosate. In Canada, we can't use it a month before harvest. But the, but the, we expecting that there are more strict regulations. So there is need for an alternative, which mulches could be one of the alternatives. Um, uh, also in the region, there is availability of the forestry products that uh, and yard waste that can be used as a mulch. Um, the we know that these organic amendments and mulches they enhance the soil health. And with the climate change, there's need for this more um, resilient production systems and uh, adding organic matter to the soil would be one of uh, the solutions uh, to, um, to uh, mitigate the climate change or the effect of the climate change on, on the production system. Um, we see that there is a gap in the knowledge on how addition of the organic amendments impact there's a lot of a study that looking at the total carbon and nitrogen in the system but uh, there is less there has been less attention on the soluble organic carbon and nitrogen in different soil depths and interaction of the interaction of those with microbes the important thing about these pool of carbon and nitrogen is that they're soluble so they move with the water and then they can move to the deeper soil and we know that in the perennial horticultural crops, the depth, uh, the, even the soil, uh, the root zone extended below the 30 centimeters. So that interaction of the carbon and nitrogen with the organism can impact the production system. Um, so the objectives with that, the objectives are to evaluate the effect of mulch and compost on wine grape yield stability. Um, assess the changes in the soil carbon and nitrogen down the soil profile with mulch and compost application uh, as a possible mechanism for the yield stability. And more importantly, we were looking at the microbial community function and the impact or interaction with the carbon and nitrogen dynamic in the soil profile. The site is located at Summerland Research and Development Center, Okanagan Valley, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, it's a semi-arid region. Uh, you see the picture of the vineyard in the uh, bottom here. Uh, cool winters, warm summers, and low annual precipitation, about 300 milliliter, millimeter uh, per year. And soil is sandy, light texture soil, uh, sandy loam, uh, with pH of close to neutral, uh, carbon 1.7%, uh, total nitrogen, uh, 2.51 uh, uh, milligram per gram. And uh, uh, this vineyard is, or, or grape block is planted in 2011, Merlot on the rootstock of SO4, which is like a, a drought resistant rootstock, uh, spacing 1.2 meter per three meter, drip irrigation. Um, and uh, we had five replication. Uh, with randomized complete block design and treatment were control, mulch 120 tons per hectare or three inches uh, depth of mulch on the surface in the, uh, in the spray, uh, sp uh, sp spray strip. 
uh, and compost at 6.1 ton per hectare, which is relatively a low rate, just underwine, and the combination of the mulch and compost. So these are the four treatments that we had. Uh, in this study, we didn't uh, use the compost. So we just used the mulch and combination of the compost and mulch versus and, and control. So three treatments. Uh, you see the characteristics of the mulch and compost. Uh, mulch was a carbon-rich uh, uh, carbon material with the lower pH because it was the shredded bulk and woody material from uh, uh, coniferous trees. Uh, the compost has higher pH, mainly from uh, grape pumice, straw, shredded bulk mulch and wood chip, and 40% cow manure, so higher pH expected. and Again, high carbon and, and a considerable amount of total nitrogen. Uh, we did the soil sampling in 2018. So uh, you saw that the project started in 2011. We had several applications. Every other year, we applied the compost and mulch. Uh, we collected samples from different depths, 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 45, 45 to 60 centimeter. And we measure the total carbon, total nitrogen, and we also did a uh, respiration experiment and we quantified the amount of respiration uh, 102 days, so different intervals, two days, four days, seven, and so on. And we use a kinetic model to measure the maximum amount of mineralizable carbon in the soil. We did another experiment uh, to measure the uh, mineralizable uh, uh, nitrogen. And that was a long-term aerobic incubation uh, experiment and we incubated the samples at 25 degree, 90% uh, relative humidity, uh, the soil moisture of 55%. And then we periodically on those, the same dates that we use for the carbon uh, respiration, we leach the samples and we measure the nitrate ammonium, dissolved organic carbon, dissolved organic nitrogen in, in the solution. Um, in terms of the microbial uh, study, we measure the total community DNA. We also measure some of those function, uh, community functions, such as uh, uh, polyphenolic uh, carbon contents or uh, uh, LACOS, uh, glyphosate uh, hydrolase, some of these enzymes that uh, they show the effect of these or the function of these microbial community or uh, cello biohydrolase and uh, beta glucose codase. And these are impacting different components of the soil. So polyphenolic compounds, hemicellulose, cellulose, and oligosaccharides. Um, we'll be looking at the effect on the yield, yield quality or growth. Uh, you see all these parameters listed above in this table and effect of control, mulch, mulch plus compost. Um, as you see in the bottom uh, row, no effect were significant. However, we saw some uh, uh, we saw some uh, trends. So, for example, you see that titratable acidity, and these are different years. So, from 2017 to 2020. In 2020, there, you see that there was a trend towards lower uh, titratable acidity in the amended plot versus the control. Uh, it wasn't significant, but uh, you see some of these differences. Uh, yield stability, again, we look at the yield. Um, uh, you see how changes from year to year. We would like to have a less up and downs, which you see in the, in the mulch treatment, there is less slope. Uh, when we're looking at the variance, uh, the right uh, the graph in your right, and coefficient of variation or CV, we expected to have lower, and we saw that we see lower in the mulch and in the compost plus mulch. So we can uh, conclude that there's uh, a positive effect or improved in the yield stability when we using these amendments. And this is what we're looking for uh, to combat the climate change or mitigate the effects of climate change. Um, in terms of the carbon nitrogen dynamics, you see that, uh, uh, we almost doubled the amount of carbon in the soil 
uh, in different average among different depths when we applied these organic amendments. So nine versus 16.5 in mulch plus compost. And uh, nitrogen, total nitrogen also changes and improved, but in the lesser extent compared to the carbon. Uh, and uh, when we're looking at the nitrate, we see that uh, again, higher nitrate levels uh, saw in the uh, mulch plus compost and in the mulch versus the control. Um, the results of that incubation and respiration, we see that uh, uh, there was uh, definitely higher dissolved organic nitrogen, uh, three times higher in mulch plus compost. Uh, when we apply these materials, we hugely improve the uh, dissolved organic nitrogen in the soil profile. And when we adding the mineral nitrogen, nitrate, ammonium, dissolved organic nitrogen, uh, we see that again, three times higher. So nine in the control, nine milligram nitrogen or PPM nitrogen versus the 28 PPM nitrogen in the mulch plus compost. And this is something that we need to pay attention at times or most of the times people only looking at the nitrate but we know that dissolved organic nitrogen can uh, transform into the nitrate very quickly in the soil. So this is like very interesting impact that we, we saw here. Then in the left graph, you see the soil total organic carbon, how it changed uh, between the treatment and also between the depths. So as you go to the de uh, depth of the soil, they reduced, but uh, the positive impact of the amendment continues till 45, to the depth of 45 centimeter, which is that's fantastic. And that's what the hypothesis is that the soil uh, or the root zone extended to 45 centimeters because the uh, dissolved organic carbon and nitrogen moved down to, to the soil profile to that depth. Um, in terms of the cumulative dissolved uh, organic carbon, you see again, mulch and compost is almost like two times higher compare and it reduced with the depth, but the impact is also seen even at 45 to 60 centimeter, you see that uh, dissolved carbon has moved. And when you're looking at the ratio of the total carbon to dissolved organic carbon, you see that it's a high ratio, 1750 to one. Um, these graphs again show the amount of carbon, uh, amount of the respiration, sorry, in different depths. Uh, the left is no amendment, the right is uh, mulch and compost, so two extremes. And you see the lines way, way higher when we have, and the impact even showed in the deeper layer of the soil. So very important to pay attention to that in terms of total nitrogen, similar pattern as the carbon, because the nitrogen is added from the surface, organic matter added from the surface. You see the effect more on the surface. When we're looking at the nitrate, uh, then you see the same pattern, the nitrate concentration then in the depth is higher, same as dissolved organic nitrogen. And the interesting thing here is that the ratio of the nitrate to dissolved organic nitrogen is one. So if you only consider nitrate in your soil in terms of the nitrogen nutrition, you're missing half of the story. And so in calculating the nitrogen fertilizer rate, uh, we need to pay attention to both nitrate and dissolved organic nitrogen. Here, uh, and the graph shows the soil nitrogen fractions in three different treatments we have. So the blue is in nitrogen, mineral nitrogen, uh, and, and the green is dissolved organic nitrogen. You see with adding these amendments, the quality, the quality of soil organic matter was changed in the treatment. So more uh, soluble, more available forms of these nutrients can be seen in the soil. And there is a good relationship between the mineralization rate and dissolved organic nitrogen in the soil, which shows that dissolved organic nitrogen very quickly is a readily mineralizable nitrogen and a form, it could be a form of available nitrogen in the soil. Uh, looking at the bacteria, total extractable DNA way higher in the mulch and compost followed by mulch and then the control, which is eight versus 15.8. Um, uh, 
looking at those um, different functions, you see hugely uh, lactose, which is uh, the composition, it's uh, the enzyme that affects the composition of the phenol and the lignin uh, improved in the surface of the soil, almost like uh, uh, double or triple, uh, same as uh, glycoside and, uh, and also uh, beta glucose, which is the, uh, the com uh, it's an effective enzyme in the composition of the oligosaccharide. In summary, a significant contribution of the mulch and mulch compost to, uh, to soil health was observed, greater quantity of soil carbon and nitrogen fractions and enhanced respiration in different depths up to the 60 centimeter, definitely in the top uh, 45 centimeter, huge impact. A greater magnitude of the increase in the soil respiration as a result of surface applied soil amendment was observed in the zero to 30 centimeter compared to 30 to 60. Um, nitrogen change in the lesser extent compared to carbon. So carbon is the key here. And uh, DON or dissolved organic nitrogen need to be considered in the fertilizer recommendations. The enzymes or the that show the, uh, the function of the microbial community, they hugely impact, uh, almost doubled by using the amendments, uh, particularly in the surface soil, and a strong relationship between the functional capacity of microbial community and both amount and respiration of the available carbon. So with that, we need more research uh, to explore the interaction of the roots and this uh, microbial, enhanced microbial community and carbon and nitrogen fractions. So something is happening in the depth of the soil when we adding these amendments because of that soluble material, carbon nitrogen moving down the soil profile and they extending the root zone to the deeper layers. So your plants become stronger, have access to more resources in terms of water and nutrients. And with that, I would like to thank you, the, the funders of the project, the government of Canada, BC Wine Griff Council, uh, CGCN, uh, and also uh, the farm crew and the student and technician that helped in conducting this research. Thank you very much.